We'll be back in New Zealand. Sorry, not Rob Waddell. We'll be back in New Zealand. Some of Mahe Drysdale will be yeah. back in New Zealand watching that and being very impressed. So the men's eights, five crews in this. And again, we have another New Zealand crew. They'll be wanting to perform better than they did yesterday. There's the boat, Greg. So, yeah, time for the men's eight. Eight rowers. Cox sitting in the back of the boat, not necessarily male or female anymore. The blades not necessarily in those positions. They can occasionally put in the tandem, put the two blades together if they want to configure the crew that way. Um, but here we see the lineup. The crew's sitting quite relaxed still on the start. They know it's not quite time to go yet. They won't have had the call over yet. So still just keeping relaxed. The, the calm before the storm. And so to New Zealand, Coach Cox, sorry, by Caleb Shepherd, who took the New Zealand Olympic eight to that sixth place in the final. Germany, the favourites for this race, they're Cox, Martin Zauer, Cox, the Olympic silver medal eight, and Hannes Ocek in the stroke seat, stroke that boat to a silver behind Britain. Nobody in this boat was in the British boat that took gold in Rio. It's a new crew, new young crew. And this Australian crew, likewise, stroked by Alex Purnell. Alex Purnell from Sydney University. And the Poles, silver medal, great silver medal from them in the Europeans. You used to race these guys, Greg. Yeah, the Polish eight were always very strong. You always knew what you were going to get with them, which was total commitment. They would try to lead at 500, and then they'd try to hang on and carry on going. And, uh, yeah, I expect to see nothing different from them today. Likewise, the German eight, very used to racing against German eights, and I think they are the form crew here. I think they will look to get out and just keep churning it out as they, uh, as they started the season doing at World Germany. Cup 1. So, Australia. last race of World Cup 2, the call-over, the start will be soon. Attention. It was a long hold and then that silence gets broken as uh, all the crews start rowing and then the coxes all join in and the noise and the cauldron of excitement happens. I was just so impressed with how, how poised the German crew were in that first three or four strokes. It, it was no hurry, no smash, 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 just get the boat off the start nice and clean. For them, their boat speed is 250 to 650. That's where they look to build the pace. Well, they're going to need to because it looks like it's the British crew, actually, the young crew, like you said, none of these from the, the Rio gold medal winning crew. Um, who've just stolen half a canvas in the first 20 strokes. But uh, I look to see the Germans, to me, looking at a little bit more poised, like you said, like they have from the first stroke, a little bit more poised and just moving ominously up so through the can, field. We can see the British bowman, Tom Jeffrey, and Tom Jeffrey in the bow of the British eight. Had a few illnesses, won the Henley medal with Thames Rowing Club now in the British Eights, and it's fantastic to see a young lad like him in that crew as we move down the British Eight, right down to their Cox, Henry Fieldman now rowing for Leander Club. In the stroke seat, Lance Treadle, switched from bow to stroke, the Cambridge University row, through the 500 metres, and Germany hit the 500 in front. And we do say the crew that's winning at 500 usually wins in a men's eights race, but... Um... It's certainly pretty tight. The German eight aren't having it all their own way and they'll look to start to squeeze on now and start to just take, you know, a centimetre a stroke, two centimetres a stroke, and that for me is exactly what they're doing here, just easing their way away from the British beside them and the rest of the field. Well, Johannes Wiesenfallen, actually, we're zooming in on Felix Wimberger there, down Max Planner, and there's uh, Tobin Johansson, brother of Eric, who you, who you must have raced in that 2012-8, uh, Greg. Johannes Ojcik the man in the stroke seat from the Schweiner Ruder Club, Martin Sauer. You can just see his hat there in between the two British oarsmen. It's a great shot when you see this, uh, you know, the eights all abreast of each other. Yeah, that's, I mean, being in an eight when you're side by side with another eight is such, it's what rowing's all about. There's so much noise, there's so much going on. And then you see the stillness and the control of the coxes. We see Henry Fieldman there just calling his crew on, looking to get them to keep the pace up because the New Zealand crew looks like it's come level with the British and they're going to want to work their way through that British crew now as the Germans continue to edge away. 
Through the 1,000 metres, Germany have stretched out nearly a length lead over the fast starting British. Great performance from the British. They had to be content with a fifth place in the Europeans. For them, it's all going to be about the third quarter. Can they hang on? Yeah, what a great ride. Johannes Wiesenfeld riding shotgun in the German eight. Felix Wimberger and Max Planner in front of him. The two men from the four last year moved into the eight. And there's the uh, stern pair, Richard Schmidt. What a fantastic seven man he is. The German from Udrein, Trevis and Hannes Ocek. We see the Kiwis, that's a much better performance from them. They were very disappointed yesterday. They were right off the pace, but now coming back into the race head to head with the British. A lot of these New Zealanders were in the crew that raced in Rio. They've got more experience than the British. You would expect them to be going quicker than them, but the British are neck and neck with them at the moment. Yeah, that's right. The New Zealand crew just looking to ease their way through. Interesting that we've got James Lashill there in the uh, bear seat, a former lightweight who was in the lightweight for sweep team, now looking to row sweep, but in the heavyweight team, and he's doing a good job in the bow seat of that New Zealand eight. I think he's up around 80 kilos, actually, now, 79, 80 kilos. Noel Donaldson said he's put on a weight nicely, but he's such a smooth mover, and it's great to see that there is space or there, for lightweights to come in from the event. Lightweight fours, not in the Olympics, and James Lasher has made it into the open weight team. Yeah, and then New Zealand uh, eights made a really good move in the third quarter. The British there are going to look to try and hang on to the bronze, see if they can come back. Australians and Polish surprisingly far down, actually. Look at the smoothness around the back turn of the uh, German eight. You can see it there, Hannes Ocek in the stroke seat, but it just looks great. It really does look good. They look smooth, as you said, from stroke one. Um, more efficient, really, than, uh, than anyone else in the race and perhaps than some other German eights we might have seen. I think I think Schmidt is a key guy in this German eight, the seven man. I really think he anchors it. And yeah. Ocek, he's not strong on the ergo. He sets a beautiful rhythm, but but Schmidt really does set it up from the seven seat, doesn't he? Yeah, I think the seven seat is such an important seat in an eight. I also think the bow seat really makes makes the boat feel good if you've got someone up there who gives you that good smooth press away from the finish. But winning an eights race by clear water doesn't happen very often. It looks like the German eight's going to do that today. Kiwis have had a much better row today. They've moved through the British. That's what they should do. These men, a lot of them finished sixth in the Olympic Oaks final. Caleb Shepherd, the Kiwi Cox, you've got a shot of there. They're chasing the Germans. It's the one, two, three. Normally, you don't see eight races as spread out as this, Greg, as the Germans come to yet another title. They didn't appear in Belgrade. They won the Europeans. They've won here, World Cup two. New Zealanders take the silver medal. Britain take the bronze ahead of... What well, I guess might be a slightly disappointing performance with the Australians and a very disappointing performance. Bear in mind they took the silver medal in the Europeans from the Poles. Yeah, the Polish eight will be disappointed with that. They looked good yesterday in the uh, exhibition race, but uh, this was the one that was always going to matter. And Martin Sauer there in the position he likes to be, the coxing seat. Richard Schmidt there, as we said, talked about in the seven seat, familiar with winning eights races. And uh, yeah, it's more of the same from the, the Deutsche Arkta. New Zealanders will be quite pleased. We can see clenched fists. And the Germans, 518. That is... 518 is rapid. Well, to me, that's a new world's best time. And I know we haven't been on the world's best time and haven't been looking at that, but 518 is a new wow. world's best time in rowing. 519. 519 it was, Set yeah. by the Canadians in 2012. And they did that effortlessly, didn't they? Dave? They did, they did. Because they were clear water up, they weren't being that badly pressed, were they? 100.56%. Wow. And we didn't call it, and the conditions don't look that quick, but they did that without really seeming... I know they are trying, but they seemingly were so light and so effortless and so fluid. I think we've got to apologise to Deutsche Alter. Yeah. That they, again, were not leading at 500. Maybe that's what didn't make us think they were going that fast. That at 500, they had a couple of feet, a, a metre yeah. ahead of the British eight. But then they just took it and kept going and going and then setting a world best time going under that 519 that stood for a long time. Well, the Canadians went through in 117 through the 500, 237 through the 1,000 metres. They were 238. Then... They did 3.58, which was spot on, and then really, so they were behind the world record until the last 500 metres, and that was really what, what, what took them to that new world's best time, Greg. So that's why we weren't on it, basically. Yeah, wow. 
And you can see the conditions there. It's not white horses. It's not the sort of conditions where you see world best being set. It's just that really lovely tailwind and, and lovely warm conditions. So we have had a fantastic World Cup today. World's best time, a plenty. Women's pair, men's single, and now in the men's eights. It's not often you get to say, I was there when the men's eights set a new world's best time. I remember seeing the uh, Canadians set that time in 2012 in Lucerne at the regatta, and now Germany.